Son finds out the reason behind his mother's strange disappearance every Christmas when he receives a letter. John Dora loved Christmas like any other kid in his childhood. He used to be amazed by lights and decorations around the town and would often request his dad to take him to the market so he could see the mesmerizing fairy lights. The lights used to hold him captivated under its spell. John's childhood was spent in Highland, Illinois with his mom, Sue. On Christmas morning, John used to wake up even before his alarm would ring and sneak out of his bed, tiptoeing to the room where his mother used to keep all the gifts. That was the only day his mother didn't have to yell at him to take a bath because that day he used to take a bath even before his mother would know that he was awake. He used to be cheerful and chirpy on that day, but there was something that would make him curious too. Everything used to happen as usual on every Christmas, but there was one thing that stuck out like a sore thumb. Every Christmas, his mother would go away for some hours and the same family members would have no idea as to where she might have gone. The strange thing had become like a ritual now and has happened since he was a kid. When he was young, he never used to take her absence so seriously because he used to be engrossed in his world. But when he grew up, he became suspicious about her behavior. When John grew up, he started questioning his mother about her sudden absence every time she used to give one or the other excuse and he'd become quiet. He knew his mother was a God-fearing lady and wouldn't do anything that could hurt her husband or family. After certain years, he too stopped asking his mother because he was tired and couldn't bear any more lies. He just wanted to make sure that his mother was safe. But where did she used to go? Years passed by and he became a writer and a teacher. Sue was always proud of her son and encouraged him to find his calling. He excelled in his career and often traveled around the world to promote his books. No matter wherever he used to be in the whole world, he would always come home for Christmas. After a few years, he settled in Mississippi and taught in a school for 30 years before moving to Georgia and England. While he was teaching in the school, John also worked for a magazine named the Straight Up Magazine for nearly two years. The magazine used to publish all about music, art, and cultural news happening in Belleville, Illinois. The magazine allowed him to explore his creativity and he wrote about everything without restricting himself to one particular genre. John was quite famous in his field and he was constantly making everyone proud of his independent and collaborative ventures. Even the facilitators at the Carlinville Writers Guild used to speak highly of John. Robin seemed to be totally in awe of him and often compliments that he manages to find humor in just about everything and he's got great imagination. Sue was a very kind and adorable woman. She used to befriend anyone in just a few meetings. She loved arranging parties for her friends and was the most wonderful host. Despite having such a wide circle of friends, no one had an idea as to where she used to disappear in the evening of every Christmas. Her husband was also confused with her behavior but never inquired about the same. When they couldn't find any solid reason behind her absence in the evening of every Christmas, the father gave up and accepted her theory that she used to go shopping to buy gifts and candies for the kids. But whenever she used to return, she would often complain that she couldn't find any good stuff in the market. The family members knew that she would often do all her shopping before Christmas. What was she hiding and why? As the years passed, John had become more considerate about his mother's safety than knowing about her secret. He wished if he could talk to her about the same. He wanted to drop her off wherever she used to go, but he didn't know how he would approach her and what he would say. He was doubtful if she would tell him the truth about her whereabouts when she kept it a secret for several years. It was an important year for him as he was trying his best to get his stories published in Chicken Soup for the Soul. A lot of writers aspire to feature their stories in the book because they know it would be a matter of pride for them if the publishing house would consider their stories to be published in the book and he was trying his best to get his story featured. It had been years since he wanted to ask about her secret disappearance but never dared to ask her about the same. He didn't realize that if he was growing old, so was his mother. And before he could confront her about her weird behavior, the old lady had said goodbye to the world when she was in her early 70s. The secret that she had shielded for several years had gone with her to the grave. When he went to her grave to pay homage to his mother, he was completely shattered in pieces. There were so many things he wanted to tell his mother, but he was just waiting for the right time. He wanted to tell her that he believed in her and wanted to take care of her. He wanted to ensure her safety, but now it was too late. She was gone. He sat there for the whole night crying his eyes out. 
John had now left all the hopes of finding out the secret because every time he used to think about the same he'd often find himself crying because it would make him miss his mother. She was the one who believed in him and his ventures and encouraged him to follow his dreams. He wanted to be famous and now when he was famous his favorite admirer was gone. He had everything at his disposal but no one to share the luxury with. He could eat whatever he wanted or visit different places but after his mother's death his days had become bleak and hopeless. He confined himself in his house and would rarely go out. He'd stopped picking up calls and hardly replied to any emails until he received a letter that changed his life forever. A few days after Sue's death, when John came back home one evening, he found a letter in his mailbox. He picked it up and threw it on his desk without even looking at the sender's address. He just wanted to be with his father because it was his presence that could soothe his unrest soul. Who might have sent the letter and what was written in that letter? The letter was still on his desk. The man thought it might be some collaboration request, so he didn't open it. The next morning when he came near his desk, he remembered about the unopened letter. He picked it up with no interest, but something inside his heart prompted him to open the letter. What was written inside that letter? John tore the envelope from the edge and took the letter out of it. He first looked for the sender's name. It was written by a man named Robert. This name was completely alien to John. He'd never partnered with a man named Robert. This aroused his curiosity to read the letter further. Who was Robert and why did he send the letter to John? It seemed like the man knew his mother. They both were colleagues when she used to work at the toilet seat factory. John speculated as to why Robert would have sent him the letter. He thought that the person might have wanted to come pay homage to his deceased mother, but somehow that wasn't able to come. So he might have written a condolence to him. Was the speculation true? He didn't have any courage to read what was written inside it, but somehow he made up his mind to read it. Robert's letter started with the following words. I just wanted you to know how much my family and I appreciate what your mother has done for us for all these years. John wasn't able to make out anything out of this. So to clear his doubts, he continued to read further. The letter further read, Every year on Christmas Eve day, your mom comes to my house dressed like Mrs. Claus and gives a Christmas we can't afford to give them. The secret that she guarded for most of her life was now as clear as crystal. He couldn't control himself and tears started to roll down his cheeks. But there was more to this revelation. Robert's letter further stated, She's given them shoes, shirts, jeans, toys, and candy. I know your heart is heavy and that you're missing Miss Sue. We do too, he continued. We loved her and just wanted you to know what she's done for us. And now the whole truth lay bare in front of his eyes. And he was so overwhelmed that no words came out of his mouth. From the letter, he came to know that every Christmas, his mother would disguise herself as Mrs. Claus and used to bring a smile on the kids' faces. Now the pieces of the puzzle seemed to fit correctly. When he read the letter, it seemed like his lips were sewn together for a minute and he wasn't able to mutter a word. She'd always been his inspiration, but now he respected her even more than before. He knew his mother was the kindest woman anyone could ever meet, but what she did for her co-workers' kids was far more than kindness. There might be some people who would show kindness to the needy ones, but he couldn't think of anyone who would go this far as to bring a smile on the kids' faces and restore their faith in the better days. She used to save her pocket money and buy gifts for his children. John was now proud of his mother. After reading the letter, he went to his dad to tell him the truth that was buried for so long. Even his father was spellbound by his wife's act and cried his eyes out on the hearing the same. At this moment, he just wanted to hug his wife and tell her that he was the luckiest man on earth. He always used to adore her, but that day he was proud of her, just like his son. After the surprising revelation, the old man asked John to write a letter as a reply and thank him for letting him know about the woman's good deeds. John was too thinking about the same, so he didn't waste any more minutes and sat to write a letter to the man. Though he was a writer, he wasn't able to write a word in the note at that time. He was sobbing while remembering his mother. He somehow managed to write a reply and he wrote, That short note was the best gift that I've ever received from anyone, and sent the letter to Robert at the given address. What was the end? If you're thinking like that, then just watch further to know what John did afterwards. Writers often take inspiration from their own experiences, and this experience was nothing less than a roller coaster ride for him. 
That night, he didn't sleep at all. His mind was full of thoughts and he wanted to put pen to paper. A lot of inspirational stories come out every day, but for John, it wasn't just a story. It was an emotion that he wanted to share with the world. He wanted to immortalize Sue's action into a story that everyone could read. Finally, John was invited to send his story for the Christmas edition of The Joy of Christmas by Chicken Soup for the Soul. He jumped with joy that finally his hard work had paid off. He considered his invite as the gift that God had given him on Christmas, and he thought that it was just his mother's good deeds that his fate smiled on him again, and he got an invite to submit his story. Amy Newmark, who was the publisher and editor-in-chief, was smitten with the story when she read it for the first time. John knew a lot of writers wished to get featured, and the competition was quite tough, so he considered himself really lucky when he was invited to submit his story for the Christmas edition. It was a dream come true kind of situation for John, and he was extremely happy about the same. Before this incident, John wanted to get featured in Chicken Soup for the Soul to get famous and earn a lot of money. He knew that after getting an invite from the publishing house, he'd be bombarded with opportunities. But now his main motive was to tell the whole world that good deeds never go in vain. Just like making others happy never goes out of style. And luckily, he succeeded in his motive too. If you like this story and think it might have a positive meaning, you can share it with your family and friends. We would also love to hear your comments about this story. Thanks for watching and have a great time.